the speed limit virus. This rant is going to be short and sweet, and I need you to listen. There is an epidemic that started spreading through this world a long time ago. It has killed millions of people. It doesn't care about demographics, it doesn't care about color, age, sex, or nationality. Every year we live with the threat of it, and every year it takes more lives. If you are a bit confused by this, allow me to clarify. This isn't about the virus of 2020. I'm talking about what I like to call the speed limit virus. Every year, roughly 1.3 million people die in car accidents worldwide, an average of 3,300 deaths per day. Young adults aged 15 to 44 account for more than half of all road traffic deaths. In addition, car accidents are the leading cause of death among young adults ages 15 to 29, and the ninth leading cause of death for all people. That last paragraph is very important for a number of reasons, so let me break it down for you. It's October, and mainstream media is reporting that the 2020 virus is approaching one million worldwide deaths. If it continues at this pace, the virus will supposedly kill as many people as the speed limit virus, but there are some notable differences. The most obvious is that the speed limit deaths are mostly younger and is in fact the leading cause of death for people under the age of 30. Compare that with the 2020 virus where the average age of those who die is, what, over 80? By any measure you can think of, the speed limit virus has far more of an effect on working class citizens and the death count has increased every year since the automobile was invented. Unlike what we are dealing with in 2020, the speed limit virus is almost completely curable. We've had the cure since the car was invented, and yet no one dares propose the solution out loud. Not because it's horrible or unethical, but because it's simply ridiculous. To save millions of lives from being lost to the speed limit virus, all you have to do is reduce all road speeds to 10 miles per hour. I know it sounds like just another clever comparison, and of course it would never be implemented in real life, but hear me out. Having a 10 mile per hour limit on all roads eliminates 99% of all fatalities, guaranteed. If you hit another car that is also doing 10, then even the combined speed would barely be enough for a serious injury. At 10, you can run into a tree, a cyclist, even a pedestrian, and chances are, the worst you will see is a moderate hospital stay. Car insurance rates would drop dramatically because the overall chance of accidents would plummet. So where is the downside? The downside, as you can imagine, is everything else. Reducing the speed limit to 10 miles per hour means that even in the best conditions, it takes you an hour to go 10 miles. You can ride a bike several times faster than that. Hell, you can run faster than that. Cities would change because people would be forced to work much closer to home. Interstate trucking would cease to exist along with most of highway travel. City to city bus lines would collapse. People would flock to trains because they run on a track system where the speeds aren't regulated. Cars would last much longer because of less wear and tear and all sectors of the car parts industry would go into steep decline. The short version is that it would take too long to get anything done and many aspects of our economy would suffer greatly if not collapse entirely. A 10 mile per hour speed limit would simply cost too much in the long run. It's a bad idea and you knew this before I explained it to you. But that's exactly what we let happen in 2020. The death rate for the so-called pandemic is coincidentally almost identical to car-related deaths. But for this, we shut everything down. At first, the general public accepted it as temporary safety measures. It took months to figure out that something else was happening, something much larger and far more sinister. But by then, it was too late. The people, otherwise known as you, 
would have never stood still if all the road speed limits were torn down and replaced with 10 miles per hour. All of you would have lost your minds. You would have complained that it takes too long to get to work, to get to school, to get anywhere at all. You would have marched in the streets and everyone would have been unified for a common goal. You would have ripped down those signs and launched a massive campaign against it because you know better. Instead, you let them tell you that your hours have been cut, or you had to work from home, or worse yet, that your place of business is not just closed until a new normal returns, but gone forever. They told you that your kids will be attending the same school, but that everything there is different now. In addition, your kids could be learning from home sometime. They told you that your church is closed and that you can't gather in groups, and they told you that if you see anyone defying these orders, you should let the proper authorities know. They have divided you by class. They have divided you by race. They have divided you by political party. Now they are trying to divide you by household. You know that none of this makes sense, that the math doesn't add up, that something smells rotten, but you don't know what to do about it. What can you do about it? Well, for one, you don't have to be embarrassed or ashamed for having doubts. Something is wrong and you feel it in your heart. The first step is admitting you have a problem. You've probably heard that before. I think it applies. You are also free to express your opinions with friends, family, and coworkers. Believe me when I say that many of them are in the same boat you are. They are running out of money, they are running out of patience, and they are running out of time. People are on the edge. They are on a hair trigger. Maybe you've noticed some things happening around you. The world is being changed by the powers that be. If you want to go along with it, then that is your God-given right. You will also have a right to push back and enter the new era that is more in line with your thinking, your terms. Follow your heart and push back. If you want to go quietly into that good night, then by all means, do nothing. There will be a knock on your door eventually. However, if you're the type of person that thinks it's better to burn out than to fade away, then maybe you should realize something, talk about something, and do something. It's your world. Don't let them change it for you. There is still time. Break the speed limit and take your life back.